Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Electronic Invoicing for Dynamics 365. My name is AJ and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being re-recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the presentation. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Gilberto Onodarat, Senior Program Manager, Merrick Roleski, Principal PM Manager, and Dimitri Kaluzhny, Principal Engineering Manager. Gilberto, over to you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, AJ. Morning, good afternoon, everybody. So you're welcome to this presentation. So I will start showing you the agenda for today. So we want to make a quick overview about what is electronic invoicing service. Uh, I want, we want to make, to present you what's new and present you, make a short demo of, uh, of the new features. We want to show you, uh, the upcoming features and we will finish with a quick question and answer session. So making a quick, uh, introduction here, just remember, uh, we have, we have already the record, we had already this, uh, first tech talk session about electronic invoicing. It was made in February. So please feel free to join the community and watch the recording of that uh, first session. So first, uh, let's give you uh, a context for uh, and the motivation for the electronic invoicing service. So electronic invoicing is uh, nowadays is a regulatory trend, uh, which was mostly made to prevent tax evasion. Globally, uh, estimations uh, say that um, 20 or, or from 20 to 30% of collection taxes uh, have problems with tax evasion. So, and electronic invoicing is already a reality in many countries around the world. So such kind, such as Brazil, Italy, Mexico, and more. And the European Union uh, has a goal to make the electronic invoicing a predominant, in, predominant invoicing method for all companies. The electronic invoicing so start started as B two G business to government uh, scenario, but nowadays is being expanded and also is uh, fulfilling the business to business scenario in in a growth market. So. Today, there are more than 500 billions of invoices issued globally, around 65 billion, they are electronically, utilizing 12% of market penetration. So when it comes to electronic invoicing, most of the companies, they have to deal, uh, even during implementation and operation, they have to deal with two conflicting demands, right? From one side, they need to deal with a variety of formats, architectures, technologies, level of maturities ac across the countries. And especially if the electronic invoice is, has, is driven by uh, the government. So this is a mandatory compliance. So not compliance sometimes is not a, is not an option. And of course, they need to face the agility to comply, right? So from time to time, governments go, uh, update the legislation and modify certain aspects of the electronic voice. And then company needs to, the, the, needs to have the necessary agility to comply with those changes. In another hand, uh, global, uh, especially global companies, they want to operate globally and scale, right? So they also want to optimize investments across multiple countries and regions to fulfill the electronic invoicing requirements. So, I mean, not investing redundantly across the countries uh, to attend this. And of course, 
they want to simplify uh, the management of a uh, system integration. So the electronic invoicing uh, aims to bring to to uh, to propose a balance to meet uh, those two different kind of uh, demands. So then, what electronic invoicing service does? First, is a cloud service for issuing and receiving uh, electronic invoices. For issuing, it supports a variety of electronic invoice formats to comply with local uh, to comply with local regulations from several countries. It integrates with tax authorities' web services for granting electronic authorization or approval. This is a common requirement when we talk electronic invoices driven by the government. And for receiving, it also supports a variety of electronic invoicing formats. And it also integrates with Office and SharePoints to automatically receive uh, electronic invoices. So, and what are the main capabilities? So, uh, electronic invoice is a worldwide, worldwide cloud service available in multiple data center geographies. So nowadays is deployed to United States, Europe, UK, and Asia. But if necessary, we can deploy to more regions. Okay. It also, it's a out of box integration with Microsoft Dynamics 365 finances, supply chain and project operations. It is available only for cloud uh, installations. And electronic invoicing also has a, co a set of features which are common, uh, independent on the country or, or region, right? So you can, for example, issue and receive electronic invoices for different country and regions. You can integrate with Office, email accounts, and share points for, uh, for integration with folders. Uh, you can store your, da your data on your Azure storage account and your secrets and digital certificates on your Azure Key Vault. You can manage access and permissions. Uh, you can manage the electronic invoice format itself. And you can manage the life cycle uh, of the configuration formats. And for it's the specific parts of that needs to be fulfilled, it's fulfilled. The Electronic invoice allows you, you can use the out of box configurable invoicing formats now available for 13 countries plus PEPO format. You can, of course, configure and customize the electronic invoice formats for the countries that uh, we are supporting. This is the list plus PEPO. You can generate invoice formats as XML and JSON formats. You can uh, sign the electronic invoice with digital certificates and you can uh, electronically communicate with tax authority web services for granting approval. And you can customize and create new electronic invoice formats that depends according to your uh, needs and requirements. Okay. So for a more detailed view about the electronic invoicing so i'm going to transition to my colleague dimitri dimitri thank you john berta hello everybody so uh, to start with uh, the details of electronic invoicing first of all we need to review what are the main components that uh, participate in the uh, operations uh, related to uh, electronic documents uh, generation or electronic invoice generation and submission. Uh, first of all, uh, probably uh, some of you already know there is a functionality, a so-called regulatory configuration service. Uh, this regulatory configuration service um, uh, is the tool set or is the platform for designing uh, uh, electronic reporting formats and designing the process how these generated uh, electronic invoices will be uh, uh, processed and submitted to external web services and external channels as well as it is possible to design the process how electronic invoicing service will 
uh, listen to external channels like emails and chat points and process incoming uh, documents. To uh, operate with uh, uh, this uh, configurable um, uh, setup of electronic invoice structures and electronic documents processing, uh, these structures are stored as um, actually as configuration as XML files in global repository managed by Microsoft. As Microsoft, we ship out of the box uh, some templates per countries, and uh, these uh, templates of the configurations are available already in globalization repository, as well as you as partners or customers. As soon as you create these configurations, uh, you will store them in the global repository, and if you want, you can share them uh, here with other partners or customers. Uh, the next point or the next um, main component, as Gilberto mentioned already, uh, these are Azure resources fully managed by you, like Key Vault and Storage Account. Key Vault is needed for storing uh, secrets and certificates that uh, are used in some of the scenarios, like digital signing or uh, during establishing of trusty uh, connection to external web services as well as storage account uh, that is uh, the main storage managed by you for all uh, documents that are generated, electronic documents that are generated uh, uh, by electronic invoicing service or that come to electronic invoicing service either from your billing system, from ERP, from a Fondo in our case, or from uh, external uh, systems like from external web services or SharePoint uh, or Mailbox. Uh, then electronic invoicing uh, operates with uh, F&O and there is a, uh, certain steps to set up both uh, F&O side and electronic invoicing side to make this um, uh, connection. And as I just already mentioned that electronic invoicing can integrate with uh, SharePoint, Mailbox, and external web services, but it is not limited because we are working on extending these um, uh, capabilities of you know, integration with other channels and uh, much more uh, external web services. In the next slide, uh, we will start looking into uh, some details. The first uh, thing that I want to uh, reiterate probably and uh, describe uh, in a more details uh, the component that is uh, related to regulatory configuration service and particularly to electronic reporting uh, uh, formats. Uh, electronic reporting functionality uh, is available in f and for quite a while and uh, here we reuse this functionality uh, for the uh, purposes of uh, creation and defining the structure of electronic formats. And now we support uh, JSON, XML, TXT, and CSV files of these electronic files. And um, uh, one of the very important things here is the possibility to define the uh, validation rules for, uh, for the structure. Uh, that allows you to do certain calculations uh, on the uh, document level that will result in either success validation or um, uh, error validation uh, before you submit the document, electronic document or electronic and was further. Uh, to work with the uh, final country specific formats or the formats that you need in your business to business scenarios uh, we uh, support uh, conversion uh, to the formats from uh, unified structure that is called uh, actually that is based on ubl structure and uh, uh, comes to electronic invoicing service from fndo and uh, this conversion uh, can be done uh, actually both way when you export the document or when you import external document uh, the system 
will be able to convert uh, uh, the files from one structure to another. Also, we are working on supporting uh, UBL uh, structure, uh, UBL uh, invoice uh, that is possible to use as an import and export structure in the electronic invoicing service. Uh, besides of that, uh, electronic invoicing service has uh, other capabilities like supporting of uh, multiple languages in the, uh, for example, invalidation rules and um, uh, has some technical stuff for uh, tracing of the performance and debugging it. And it is possible to package uh, multiple files generated in, with an electronic reporting to zip archive. Uh, this is the part that is related to particular electronic files, but on the next slide, you can see that uh, the second uh, main component here in the in, uh, electronic documents inter interchange uh, processes is the uh, steps that uh, are performed with the generated file. As an example here, uh, you can see that uh, there, are, there can be several steps. Uh, these steps we call actions, and all the actions are combined into so-called processing pipeline. So uh, besides the generation of the file, uh, in most of the cases and scenarios, you will need to do certain steps with this file. And with the regulatory configuration service, uh, it is possible not only to uh, use uh, actions and uh, processing pipelines provided by Microsoft as templates, but create your own pipelines, uh, reusing um, uh, these actions uh, in the uh, and building the process uh, that uh, will satisfy your business requirements. Uh, we provide some predefined step of the, uh, sets of these actions. And uh, you can like play around setting up each action's behavior and uh, draw such process. Uh, quickly uh, reviewing this one as an example, we can see that uh, business data in unified structure will come from a fundo during submission of the document to an electronic invoicing service or calling an electronic invoicing service with the ask to uh, perform generation and submission of your invoice. Uh, the next step here in this example is generate electronic file action that actually understands to what uh, format uh, incoming data should be converted and uh, picks necessary latest format, electronic reporting format, to do this transformation of the document. A resulted file is stored then to Azure storage. And uh, the same file then goes to the next action that is responsible for digital signature that um, uh, sets a stamp with a uh, secret or certificate stored in the cue ball, in your cue ball. The next step can be a submission to external web service, and then uh, uh, the, the results can be processed by uh, the action that is responsible for processing of the response from uh, external web services. And for processing, uh, we also use electronic reporting uh, configurations uh, to uh, provide flexibility in uh, no code setup and development of this process, where on the in, uh, uh, configuration, you can uh, define what to do with the particular response from web service and do certain actions first. In this uh, diagram, uh, one of the next actions here is just sending the file through email to predefined mail address. Uh, so uh, just to uh, summarize the processing pipeline, this is the way uh, uh, you describe how electronic invoicing service should work and what it should do with the incoming financial data. Uh, besides of that, all the submission results are returned back to FNDO client. And depending on the setup on FNDO site, uh, corresponding uh, tables and records, for example, journals, can be updated with uh, certain information that will be sent back 
to your FNDO, as well as in the FNDO, you can see the, uh, or you can um, uh, download the files generated here during uh, processing pipeline execution. Uh, the next uh, thing is uh, how submission logging works on FNDO, and on the next slide, uh, there are few uh, screenshots, but you will see that in FNDO as well during our demo. Uh, there is quite an, a rich uh, set of information that you can get from your submission process. On the right uh, side, uh, there is an uh, example that is also configurable in terms of uh, number of the columns and information that uh, can be brought here without necessity to develop anything. Uh, you will see all the um, uh, submissions that you have done and details uh, of the submissions or statuses of the submissions to the service. Uh, on the left side, uh, this is example, if you go to the details of one of the submissions, you can see details per each action and it is very important that at each action you can get the uh, error messages if they occur there to understand what were processed successfully and what uh, messages were uh, completed uh, what actions were completed with any errors and you can see output and input results of each action to do analysis uh, if uh, it is needed for you to understand uh, what is going on with the processing pipeline. Uh, besides of that, uh, if we uh, go to the next slide, uh, uh, we can see that uh, the process of defining on all these rules and all these components can be considered, uh, can be uh, seen quite a um, complex one uh, from uh, the very beginning, but uh, to simplify the whole process, we have introduced the life cycle management uh, for the whole uh, uh, processing and uh, for the whole submission of electronic uh, invoices. But uh, to describe this in more details, uh, we need to uh, get familiar with some conceptual things. First of all, we have introduced a new concept that is called globalization feature. This globalization feature, uh, in fact, is a, uh, some kind of a container that has all the artifacts that uh, uh, allows you to uh, build the proper pipeline, the proper processing, and uh, using proper formats. So usually, a uh, feature consists of uh, electronic reporting configurations that take part in the process, as well as processing pipelines that describes how the service operates. Uh, we as Microsoft uh, provide a set of such features uh, for specific countries with some predefined parameters and predefined ER configurations, uh, we release as Microsoft provider. You can import these uh, electronic invoicing features to your instance of regulatory configuration service and uh, uh, build uh, your uh, feature uh, that will be uh, done already uh, under your configuration provider uh with necessary changes yeah, if you need that for example you can specify some additional parameters or you can adjust uh, your configurations if it is necessary or uh, in the pipelines as soon as you have done uh, the changes you can either publish the global repository and share it with uh, other partners and customers if you want or uh, you will uh, be publishing that to electronic invoicing service, uh, as we call deploy to electronic invoicing service. In this case, at this step, electronic invoicing service will know what it is uh, and how it should operate in the particular scenario. And uh, besides of the overall like, life cycle here, we support versioning of these features and data effectiveness. Uh, 
that can be multiple features uh, in electronic invoicing service with multiple versions. And there is a concept of uh, the uh, so-called context uh, and applicability rules that I will show you in more details during demo. But the idea is that uh, on the Fendo side, you define a set of parameters like uh, pairs of key value that describes uh, some details of particular uh, or provides some metadata for particular electronic invoice. For example, it can be uh, some legal entity, country so-called, type of the document, or even customer group. And if this set of uh, parameters um, uh, meshes correctly with the parameters on the uh, feature level, then particular feature, globalization feature, will execute. But uh, that steps we will review quickly during our demo. And now I return back the stage to Gianberta. Thank you, Dimitri. <clears throat> so moving forward, uh, what is new? Um, so in April, we released uh, electronic invoicing service and the configuration for Egypt. In this release, we release more 12 countries, the configuration for more 12 countries, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, uh, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, and Spain. Plus the formats for PEPL, right? Which many countries, even outside Europe, adopt uh, the, the standard of PEPL. And we also are releasing uh, the receiving vendor invoice, capability to receive a vendor invoice either from email accounts as well from uh, SharePoint folders. So <clears throat> now uh, let's play uh, a short demo uh, and then in next, uh, Dimit will make another demo as well. In this scenario, I will uh, demonstrate uh, the electronic invoicing for Brazil, right? So just giving some little bit of context. So on my, in my scenario, Contoso plans to start a new operation in Brazil for selling goods. Uh, in this case, Contoso needs to prepare a new legal entity and this new, new legal entity uh, needs to comply with the local legislation, meaning that it needs to be prepared to issue the Brazilian electronic invoice, which is called Nota Fiscal Electronica or simply NFE, which is a mandatory requirement for trade operations. In case of Brazil, the electronic invoice is a mandatory requirement. Uh, it is a kind of electronic invoice that needs to be sent to the government web services to approval or rejection, right? And the, uh, the operation can just, can only proceed with the government operation from these web services and Failure to comply with this uh, requirement, or meaning not issuing an FE, uh, is illegal and exposes Contoso to several tax fines, to a severe tax fine in case of tax auditing. So those, those are the stories. So the first story is uh, Arnie's story. He's uh, the account receivable administrator. So he wants to prepare its legal entity to comply with the Brazilian electronic invoice, NFE. He doesn't need to know very much detail about what NFE does, but he knows uh, the overall requirement, which is basically uh, it's necessary to generate an XML file. Uh, this the file, this XML for the, the electronic invoice format for Brazil is pretty much standard across the country, but there are possibilities to make some small uh, customizations in case of need. This XML file must be digitally signed. This is another uh, requirement. And once the XML is uh, digitally signed, it must be sent uh, to the government web services, which is going to process and granting either approval or rejection in case of some uh, inconsistency in the file. So. And Arnie, of course, knows that he must comply with this because this is a, a mandatory requirement uh, in the country. 
And the second story is the accounts is the accounts receivable clerk. It's, it's simply going to show you how the clerk operates the issuing of electronic invoice uh, will uh, will do this. For the clerk, the only thing that he expects is simply uh, issue the electronic invoice and view the status if it was approved or rejected or rejected. Okay. So then now uh, let's go to RCS. So now I am Arnie. I am on RCS, okay, and I want to prepare uh, my legal entity to issue the Brazilian electronic invoice. So, as Arnie, I simply go to globalization feature, I go to electronic invoice. If this my first time, then I go here, so I can simply import my Brazilian electronic invoice format from the global repository, as, as uh, Dimitri showed. So in this case, I have already imported here to my RCS instance. And once I have imported, then I create a local version of this feature, right? Based on the, the feature that I have just imported here. And then I have here my feature already created. So in this page, uh, Arnie can manage all aspects of the electronic invoicing feature for Brazil, right? In the first step, he manages the life cycle, right? He, he control the, the status of the electronic invoicing feature. In this case, my feature is in draft. If Arnie wants to view or customize uh, something in the layout of the Brazilian electronic invoice, he simply can go here on, on the form itself. So this is one of the things that come ready and ready to consume from, from the global repository. And then Arnie can use here uh, the format designer, and if necessary, uh, Arnie can customize or modify anything that he wants or need in case of need. But uh, but the format came, uh, comes pretty much uh, ready for usage uh, in this in the electronic invoicing. And the second thing that Arnie one needs to do is to review the, the parameterization of the feature. If for those who knows a little bit about the Brazilian voice uh, NFE, uh, here we have several NFE events. So the first one is the most important event, which is the one who effectively generate the, 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 the Brazilian voice, signs, sends to the government. So Arne simply needs to review this configuration here. He needs to make just uh, last my configuration before starting use. So one of the things that he needs to do is first, he needs to tell to this pipeline actions, which is going to be the digital certificate that uh, is going to be used to sign the file. In this case, this digital certificate needs to be up uploaded in the key vault uh, for, for a Contoso company, right? And and it simply needs to uh, review the URL of uh, the web services who the government web services who is going to uh, to to process uh, this electronic invoice. Okay. So apart of uh, apart from that, so this is the sequence of actions that is going to generate the electronic invoice. And also, Arnie needs to review the applicability rules in case uh, something needs to be adjusted. Right. Something like, something like, for example, the legal entity ID of the company, but uh, and the state where uh, the electronic invoice is going to be issued. But everything is pretty much done here. So then, once Arnie review all the steps, so Arnie simply uh, change the status to complete. In this case, and then. Publish, which is going to uh, save this version of the electronic invoice in the global repository. And in the last action, second, and in the last action, Arnie will publish 
I'm sorry, it will deploy this electronic invoicing to the electronic service, to the electronic invoicing environment. So if you just tell which service environment you want and then click. By doing this, Arnie is ready to go. The configuration is done and uh, his FNO is ready to uh, start issuing electronic invoice. So let's see, for example, how it's going to be the accounts receivable clerk experience, for example. So now I have some screenshots here. So now I am on FNO, right? I am on the Brazilian legal entity. So Arnie, and Arnie, no, the, the accounts receivable clerk already uh, posted uh, uh, a Brazilian invoice. So this is a view of the Brazilian invoice. Notice its, its status is created. So then Arnie will go to a specific form, which is common for, uh, for all countries for submitting uh, this invoice to the electronic invoicing service. Notice that it can be run either explicitly or, if necessary, can uh, run in background. So uh, the clerk or Arnie can schedule a batch to keep running this from time to time. But let's see that let's say that uh, the clerk wants to run explicitly for this uh, in Brazilian invoice, and then when he hits OK, uh, the process starts, meaning that FNO is sending this Brazil, the data of the Brazil invoice to the electronic invoicing service. The service is processing, <clears throat> generating the file, signing, communicating with the web services, with, uh, with the Brazilian tax authority web services and get response. In this case, for example, when the response comes, the services uh, updates the status of the Brazilian invoice in the in the table now for example the clerk can see okay my invoice uh, was approved and if the clerk wants to see more details about this processing so there is a specific uh, form in fno where uh, the clerk can navigate he he, uh, he can go there select the invoice click in submission details and then he uh, the clerk will see the detail submission so in this case he can view uh, the execution log of for all steps from the pipeline action. The last one in this case is the one who uh, says what is the final uh, processing status. In this case, uh, message error uh, 100 returned from the Brazil, from the tax authority web service means the uh, NFE was approved. And in case the clerk wants to see, okay, I want to view the file which was generated in the same form, in the same uh, uh, submission for details, he simply mark the action who generate and sign the file. Actually, the first one generate, the second action and uh, assign the file. And by simply click on view, uh, the clerk can view the file. So this is the, the final uh, file generated by the Brazil for the Brazilian voice. Okay. Okay. Moving forward now, I'm going to transition to Dimitri, who is going to make a demonstration for Fatura PA. Yes. Thank you, Gilberta. And uh, the next presentation will be devoted to uh, the scenario when uh, you need to import uh, electronic invoice via email to a fundo. And in this case, we will review as an example, Fatura P Italian document. Um, and um, the process will look like that uh, some email with this XML attached comes to your mailbox and electronic invoicing service can read mails from this uh, box and then pass this um, uh, file for uh, further processing and mapping to uh, the FNDO uh, data structure uh, directly in FNDO. And also uh, based on that, um, uh, create vendor, uh, pending vendor invoice. Uh, I will show all the steps uh, in detail, starting from actually setup of uh, regulatory configuration service and uh, 
uh, show you how the setup looks like on FNDO. Let's start with the document. What I want, I want to uh, send through email this example of um, uh, Fatura P electronic document. I have a mailbox, empty mailbox that contains some already predefined uh, uh, folders. And uh, I will send actually to myself uh, attachment. Uh, we'll call that this attachment that I just shown you and some message. Let's send it. We can see that uh, we have in the mailbox inbox uh, incoming mail with attached invoice. There are no folders like uh, processed or year or whatever. Yes, uh, but we will see that these uh, folders will be created uh, when we first run the process because we will set up in this way. Now uh, we will switch to FNDO first and see that uh, I have uh, some time ago created a purchase order that I want to invoice. And uh, information in the invoice actually matches uh, the details of this purchase order. Let's go to a regulatory configuration service. Here we have globalization features uh, workspace where you need to set up all the details to operate with an um, electronic invoice submission process. Uh, I will not describe some details that are not directly related to uh, this uh, process right now, uh, but let's go first directly to electronic invoicing features, globalization features, similar to what Gilberto demonstrated right now for Brazil. But what he did, he imported template from, uh, from Global Repo published by Microsoft. But in this scenario, we will create uh, the globalization feature and corresponding pipelines from the scratch. So let's call this feature uh, for this feature, we have the first uh, number of the version. Uh, we don't need in this scenario any configurations, CR configurations on the service side because uh, the only model mapping will be executed on the Fendo side. But what we need, we need to set up the uh, integration collaboration with uh, email box and describe how the attachments will be retrieved and sent uh, to a FNDO. So I'm adding a new uh, uh, setup that uh, actually proposes you a few options. Uh, email. I will call the factory email. And uh, here are three types. The first one is a processing pipeline. A processing pipeline is uh, the set of actions what I described to you, uh, but in this context, uh, processing pipeline serves only exporting scenarios when you submit any document from F and O and it must be processed. But when we listen external channels, uh, we need to uh, define either data channel or data channel and processing pipeline. The first one, uh, just takes the attached, uh, attachment from the mail and pass it to FNDO. Uh, the next one uh, can do additional steps or actions with the incoming document. I choose the first one because in this scenario I need just to pass it over and I um, have uh, uh, two predefined channels that we support right now and we are working on extending the set of uh, channels. Uh, right now, I uh, will work through incoming key mail and click create key. Going to the details, I see that there is some information in the data channel that is pre-populated and some information I should add. First of all, let's start with 
uh, description uh, of the channel and uh, we will provide channel name. This data channel name is important uh, for uh, using in uh, FNDO and I will show you uh, the usage of this channel name. Then uh, we can define username and secret. I uh, keep my names and secrets in the key ball. And here I can refer to the key ball secrets that uh, will automatically take them from the key vault during um, connecting to my mailbox. So in this scenario, I have for the name, I have email account, key wall secret, and I keep password in key wall secret password. There are some additional uh, parameters. One of them is main for folder to look into for reading mail. It is in box and it is corresponds to the real mailbox. In archive folder, I will specify processing. This is the folder that uh, will store successfully processed mails. So they will be moved from inbox to processing. And in error box uh, will be moved all the invoices that are processed with some kind of errors. What is needed also here? Uh, uh, processing mode. We have two options, by attachment or by mail. It means that if there are several attachments uh, in the mail and you uh, select here by attachment, each attachment will be considered as a separate electronic invoice that must be processed. If you select by email, it means that one electronic invoice or electronic document will correspond only to one uh, email that comes. But if there are several attachments, they all will be linked and passed to FNDO for some kind of uh, processing. For example, if you need uh, to store uh, and you receive a um, uh, PDF file with the document. Uh, also, I need, in our case, I selected by attachment because I want just to retrieve the attachment. And here I need to specify what attachments I am interested in. I need to provide the name uh, to each attachment and provide the filter. This name uh, will be used also in a FANDO to understand what to do with this particular file. And for example, if you have PDF as a second file, you should define it here and uh, then uh, can be processed uh, somehow separately uh, in a FANDO. Uh, so I save that and then I should go to applicability rules. Applicability rules is a set of conditions that um, allows FNDO to understand uh, which, uh, to allows FNDO to pass information describing uh, what we want to do right now with the service. For example, if you submit some electronic document, you can define that it is uh, uh, generated in the particular legal entity for this particular customer. And then you can set up here in applicability rules, the same fields or some other fields and electronic invoicing service. When I receive the call from a vendor, uh, it will match uh, as many uh, lines of these rules with the incoming date as possible and the most applicable uh, feature with the applicable version will be considered as matched and it will be executed. Uh, with this uh, approach, you will be able to orchestrate uh, different um, uh, features for different legal entities. Or if you define uh, your B2B communication using some EDI or whatever, you can define several features here and set up the applicability rules the way that, for example, for particular customer, particular customer group, or some other conditions like types of the document, different processing pipelines will be executed and different uh, conversion of the document will be done to like, different formats. In our case, I want to uh, provide information, uh, channel equals to uh, FAT mail. And as soon as in the front door, there is a call to the service saying that I have such information channel FAT mail. 
In this case, service will um, uh, choose this particular pipeline and start will start um, listening to mailbox. I click save, click validate. And here I see that action parameter mandatory value not set. And indeed, returning back uh, to the setup, I see that I didn't define server address. Uh, this validation helps you to provide all mandatory fields. I define this uh, uh, server address uh, that is needed for proper operation, save, and validation should show that it is successful. Okay. Uh, we have done the setup. Uh, and uh, after that, I want to make sure that this version is completed. And now I will deploy it to, uh, to the service uh, to be sure that uh, service can already operate with the incoming requests related to, uh, to the particular, uh, to the particular uh, feature. I publish that, and right now all this, uh, this configuration is published. Uh, then I go to uh, purchase orders, uh, oh, so to, uh, sorry, to fandom, and there is a receive electronic document process. I know that uh, right now my mail is in box, and I want to run the request to the uh, service. Uh, there are usually uh, two requests uh, sent to the service uh, to get uh, the uh, file. And uh, here I need to check what, uh, what is happening with the file. We see that the file is moved from inbox to processing folder that is created. It means that uh, service, the service is successfully got uh, this uh, email and now it is processing already within the service. The next thing that I need to do is to uh, pass uh, the uh, files uh, from the service to a fan door. Uh, I uh, click that receive electronic documents once again and uh, we can uh, actually see that this file will be processed by the service and the details will be mm, sent to uh, FNDO and uh, corresponding tables in FNDO will be mm, updated with uh, uh, pending vendor invoice information. Uh, why we need two steps? Because the first one is uh, uh, pushing service to communicate with um, Outlook. The second is to retrieve the uh, documents. And we see that uh, there is a response that document successfully imported one. We can go to uh, pending vendor invoices form and we see that uh, there is an uh, invoice that is created for me today. This is exactly what uh, I was expecting for. Uh, but also we can go to electronic document receipt log and see that right now, it is my time, uh, there is a record in the uh, receipt log. I can go to details and uh, see the details of this processing. I don't have processing actions because we didn't set up, but Gilberto showed you how to uh, well, some examples of uh, the details per each action. But we have here overall status that it is completed, that is good. And we have processing data, for example, the files that comes to uh, as an attachment from email to the system. Or, for example, we can uh, look at body of the mail and uh, get the details uh, there uh, because we keep this information. Here is an invoice that I was uh, sending. Uh, how it looks like on uh, in parameters in the fundo. Uh, you probably uh, seen these two main components that I refer to. Name of the channel. So here we say that uh, F&O should call the service to check FAT mail channel. 
And to do that, there is a YAR configuration that constructs this request. So if you need to do anything to change, you can just update or change this um, electronic reporting context. And here we have a uh, definition of the file of the attachment that we are interested in. And if there are more attachments, all of them can be uh, defined here and you can do different actions with these files here on the FNDOS side. For XML file, we just applied uh, electronic reporting model mapping that transforms this file uh, from XML file and not actually transforms, but saves information, matches information to database and uh, saves this uh, to database and the process of saving to database is described in the vendor invoice import configuration. Uh, so I, I demonstrated you setup and, uh, execution as well as some parameters of FN doll. And now I'm, uh, letting, uh, Gilberto to continue with uh, his presentation. Okay. Just let me share my screen. Back. Okay. <clears throat> Hope you can see my screen. So. Just moving forward for the final part of the session. So this is our roadmap, what we have ahead. So for 2021 20, uh, wave two this year, we have a uh, plan for electronic invoicing service uh, in the Italian SDI integration, uh, which is going to be public preview. Indonesia, uh, Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Mexico. And for 2022 wave one, which is going to be beginning of next year, uh, we plan for, we plan the last mile non out of box B2G invoicing, uh, via an ISV connector and dataverse integration. So for last, so here there are some resources, uh, we have, a. Plenty of documentation already available in Microsoft Docs. Uh, here it's the link. And if you want to contact us, uh, so you can send the email for, you can send your message to this email. And if you want, you please join the Yammer community that we have dedicated for Electronic Invoice, which is Electronic Invoicing Service. Okay. So you have two minutes left or some question and answers. <laughs> uh, I would, uh, read a couple of questions from the chat, uh, here and, uh, uh, let's start with have one minute. And actually, uh, uh, okay. I have, I see some question. Is it possible send an automatic email to a customer telling you had just issued him here an invoice? So there is a possibility to define automatically uh, the uh, customer address based on, on your customer in, uh, your, on, in the uh, file that is generated. Uh, this is, uh, done by mean of retrieving, uh, customer information from, uh, that actually comes from a Fando to electronic invoicing service. Uh, so we can send electronic, uh, emails, yeah, uh, but we can send these emails right now, uh, to the predefined addresses. Exactly, uh, this uh, period we are working on extending this functionality and we have in our uh, pipeline of uh, next, uh, next additional capabilities of the service, the possibility to send, uh, emails uh, or redirect, um, uh, for example, generated documents directly to the customers or to, to vendors or your partners. So right now, uh, out of the box these days, you will not see this information, but who is interested with, uh, this, uh, capability, this functionality, please, uh, let us know directly through the mail that is available. 
uh, we don't have uh, we don't have time to answer more questions and we will be doing right now uh, after we complete this call uh, and uh, thank you very much Gilberto do you have anything else to present no so thank you very much for your time your participation and your interest so and thank you I'm going to actually post a uh, short survey link in the Q&A panel could please uh, find some time to participate. Just let us know what we did well today and what you'd like to see in future events. As a reminder, the recording for today's uh, session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and of course you, the audience, for joining us today. This concludes today's event.